You know, the, the issue of, 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 of private contracting, uh, I can't help to think, didn't come out of the whole privatization of government thing from a decade or so ago. And, and we can see where that's got us. And uh, it's unfortunate Senator Webb isn't still here. Being a, a student of history, I wanted to ask him about when wars started to be fought for profit. Um, I don't know that it's been an occurrence throughout our history, but maybe it has. Uh, uh, but I will say one thing. It, it is long past the time where we start to bring accountability and change to the way uh, America contractors do business for this country. I can tell you this. Um, in the private sector, if I've got a contractor that owes me money, he ain't getting another contract. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. And I cannot believe, and I, I don't know what happened to, to the system that would allow justification for somebody, number one, to tell you you ain't getting the information and that's the way it is, and then we're still doing business with the person. It is incredible. Um, I believe it was you, Catherine, that talked about uh, emergency supplemental being looked at as free money. Wow. When, I mean, how does this happen? I mean, these, these are government taxpayer dollars, borrowed or otherwise, in this particular case. How do we get to a point where people within the government, mil military or otherwise, looks at any dollars as free? Can you give me any insight into that? Uh <clears throat> the lack of discipline in the supplemental um, allowed a lot of what what Senator McCaskill was just talking about to occur, and that is just we can always get more money. We don't need to have um, any discipline in our requirements process because we can always get more money. And th the corollary to that is that the contractors were also considered to be a free resource. So we never had to fa factor into our planning and, and were they considered a free resource because they were off budget or what? They were off budget and they're not required. Um, the, the government itself is constrained by um, what's called FTEs, full-time equivalents. So uh, the, the number of government uh, employees is, is capped. Um, so you can keep putting missions on. In many cases, these were new missions that the agencies were taking on. They didn't have anybody to do it, so let's just go hire a contractor. And oh, by the way, it doesn't, we don't have to count that anywhere, either the money we spend or the people that we hire. Um, I, I think it was, uh, was Senator McCaskill said one-third of the money that was spent was wasted. Uh, is, that, is that for the whole war effort? The, the figure. You know, the, the figure uh, is between 30 and 60 billion. The, the argument we would make, many of us, is that it's closer to 60, but even if it was 30, we're talking out of 206 billion. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so um, retroactive accountability, you did not have the ability to look back, but yet I heard Catherine or one of you say that things got better to the chairman's question as time moved forward. I, Do you I'd think if we looked back, the waste was even higher than what it is over the period that you looked at? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, Senator. I, I think there was an improvement, there's no doubt. One of the reasons being uh, when I was in the, in the department and was at the beginning of the Iraq War, we let contracts that are called undefinitized. That's a fancy yeah. word for meaning you don't have the specifics. Uh, and, of course, we improved on that with time. But in other areas, we did not. And the fundamental problem is, is what uh, my co-chairman just talked about. We didn't have the people to go out there, partly because they didn't want to go out there. Gotcha. I can tell horror stories about that one. Uh, and so you had a situation where uh, it was contractors by default. If, if you don't have your civil servants ready to go to the theater and you can't force them to go, military people go, foreign service people go. Civil servants, some do, some don't. Uh, give you an example of that. Uh, we were out in Afghanistan, and uh, we were talking to people from the Agriculture Department. And it turned out that the Agriculture Department could not fill its allotment of people to go to Afghanistan. Now, we're not talking about thousands. We we're talking about dozens. Still couldn't fill the allotment. And those who went came from the Foreign Agricultural Service, most of whom had never seen a farm in their life. So that's, that's an great. example. <clears throat> okay. Um, um, wow. You had talked about, Catherine, in your testimony, you talked about the fact that the waste and fraud, uh, uh, waste in particular, may even be higher if the host governments can't. Did, were you able to do any uh, projections on that? I mean, quite frankly, when I was in Afghanistan, they didn't look like they were rolling in dough. Mm -hmm. And so when that turns around and the troops can pull out, 
I don't anticipate these projects could go forward. Do you guys do any projections on how much money that might be? We don't have comprehensive numbers on that. Um, I can tell you that the Special Inspector General for Afghani Reconstruction came before us and said the entire $11 billion that we're spending on the Afghan National Police Program yeah. is at risk. Yeah. Um, that's just one program and one number. But that is clearly, a, we, were, um, we issued a special report on sustainability because we were so concerned, not only the projects that had already been started that couldn't be sustained, but they, we, we were thinking about starting new projects that couldn't be sustained. Okay. Um, Senator, you put forth. Can I, can I yes, make go a ahead. Point. Sure, ahead, Chris. You, we started out, and and Robert Henke was making this point to us, and it really got us focused on this. He said, "Well, it's clear we we have uh, we got oversee contractors better, and we're not doing a proper job." Right. And then we began to to evolve. Well, if we can't see contractors better, then maybe we shouldn't be trying to do too many contracts. Right. And it even got to the point, as we've been working on this, that we think that we're trying to just do too much. Right. We're just trying to do too much. Right. We're, the gross domestic product of, of Afghanistan was hovering around a billion dollars. Right. We got about $24 billion in the government and the, and the economy now. We've totally distorted the marketplace. Yeah. And one little quick point. We were doing a wonderful... Uh, agricultural program that that fit the culture and right. the people. And then we had to spend money by the end of the budget year, and we came in with 300 billion, million, excuse me, to try to redo this program. Hey, look, I'm out of town time. Um, my last question was gonna be, what do we do about this? I mean, you guys have some recommendations about holding contractors accountable, about to make sure government promotes competition. But when we're putting people involved in agriculture, and that's something that I'm involved in, that don't know jack about agriculture, and expect to teach people who need to learn about agriculture to support themselves, and they've got no way, no chance of being able to communicate any kind of information because they don't have it in their head to start out with. Who makes the calls on that? Is this is this the head of the State Department? Is this the head of uh, of, of of our military? I mean, where does as not to not to quote Harry? Where does the buck stop on all this stuff? Well, let I me, mean, we can we can defund it all. I'm not sure that's the the, the right method to use, yeah. but maybe it is. Well, let me just quickly say we we recommend some key positions. I mean, to have the National Security Council decide to do things and not consider cost. Uh, that's why, why we want a dual-headed position, someone at OMB there. We recommend, and, and Senator Levin, this is a, ob obviously very controversial, but we think there needs to be a J-10. We think we have so many contractors part of the military effort, and there's really no coordination at the Joint Chiefs of Staff to deal with that issue. Isn't it, isn't, hold on, I, I got I to quit. Well, let me just add to I mean, your... isn't it incumbent upon the Joint Chiefs to be able to consider costs when they're doing their job? Now, I understand it's protection of the country, but if, I mean, we could, do, um, hey, the department, the head of the Department of Agriculture could say, you know, it's my job to make sure we got food security, so I'm going to spend every dollar I've got. I mean, really, I mean, you could, isn't it? We would it, say yes. Yeah, so isn't it incumbent? I mean, I understand that, but isn't it incumbent on the people who are there not to have to have a cop sitting in a room making sure that they're following the rules? Well, we recommend that. Uh, somebody at the assistant secretary level in all of the key agencies, including AID, which would be the place which would worry, together with agriculture, would worry about the kinds of programs you were talking about, uh, somebody specifically in charge of contingency contracting issues. If you don't get the leadership at the top, That's the exactly staff right. is not going to follow. I just want to thank you guys for all your work. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I'm with I'm with Senator McCaskill and probably everybody that sits at this table. We got a big problem. We've got to deal with it. We're talking about cutting programs that people actually need to pay for this kind of garbage. Thank you very much.